How's it going everybody? My name is Salty and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my best settings here for Black Ops Cold War. Now, let me start off by saying if you guys have seen my previous settings videos, nothing has changed here. This is more to keep my new subscribers up to date with what I run. I tend to get a lot of questions every day, so if you guys just want to skip right forward to the gameplay, feel free to do so. But if you guys are not familiar or need a refresher on those settings, make sure you guys hang around. I'm going to say the same thing I said in my last video. That's going to be your settings a lot of the time are going to be your preference. You're going to need to go into custom games and you're going to need to figure out what works best for you. Just because I run some certain things does not mean you are necessarily going to like them. You might like them worse than what you run now. But let's slide into it here. So for my horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity, I'm going with 8.8, which is right where it starts in the high category. Like I said, this is going to be a preference. If you guys need to find the right sensitivity, go into custom games, play against bots, slowly work your way up and see exactly where you're going to be most comfortable. As you get used to a certain sensitivity, you can definitely bump it up. And as you get to it, just keep bumping it up slowly and slowly. But I've been playing COD for over 14 years now, and I've always kind of been in this range. So sliding down here for my ADS, stick sensitivity low and high. They're both at 0.8. I'm not exactly sure what this does or what both of them mean. I know it slows down your aim in certain situations. So I have it at 0.8. I've kind of just stuck there since the game came out. I believe I had it at 0.7 at one point. I bumped it up. 0.1, I believe, is just standard for older Call of Duties, but I'm not, again, 100% sure what this actually does. I know it has something to do with sniping. I believe that's what high zoom stands for. So when you aim down the sights, how fast you can go horizontally up and down and whatnot. Then, of course, I believe low zoom is going to be when you're looking down in the iron sights or the reflex sight of a weapon how fast, again, you're going to be aiming side to side. Now, sliding down here with the aim response curve type, and you guys need to pair this up down here with your target aim assist mode. So for the aim response curve type, I run linear, and for my target aim assist mode, I have legacy. Pa pair these two, two up together. I've got nothing but positive feedback on it, especially if you guys are more of like an assault rifle, SMG player, even LMG. From what I was told, it's not good for snipers. I don't know the exact settings for snipers, as you guys know. Not much of a quick scoper myself, but if you guys are like me and you just like to go for camos, play the game casually, then Linear and Legacy is going to find you a lot of success. All right, so down here at the bottom, we have the advanced settings, and this is where you will find your dead zones or thresholds for your controller. This is where you'll figure out if you have some stick drip to the right or left, or you're having some trouble sprinting. This is where you can adjust it. So I actually just got a new controller and there's nothing wrong with it but my previous controller that i did have i couldn't sprint for some reason i would just jam that button nothing would happen i'd push it forward nothing would happen I'd just walk around the map so that's when i investigated these thresholds so this left max input meaning i don't need to jam my thumb into the controller to sprint i can just push it forward and it will sprint for me and on this other end here right stick max threshold this is for right or left so this means you don't have to push the stick nearly as far and it'll keep your drift nice and centered. So it'll kind of pull your settings more into your analog sticks. So if you guys are having trouble where you're just standing there and it's drifting right or left, make sure you guys play around with that. It's going to be more of a personal thing if you're, it's based on your own controller. You know what I mean? So I can't really give you settings for that. So down here we have auto sprint. You're going to need this on. Now this will auto slide cancel for you. So one of the hardest things to do in COD is consistently slide cancel properly. But what auto sprint does is when you slide and then aim down the sights, it will automatically make you stand back up. So that's exactly why it was banned in competitive. It's just kind of like it removes the skill gap in a way, because otherwise you'd have to hit slide, slide X or slide, slide, stand, slide, slide, jump, something of that nature to actually slide cancel properly. So auto sprint is a setting that gets overlooked a lot. Definitely make sure you have this one on. Now we're over here into the colorblind modes, and I get a lot of questions here regarding my colorblind mode. So the colorblind mode I like to use is Tritonopia. Everybody, how do you make your enemies green? How do you make their arrows green? You know, what colorblind settings? This is exactly it. We've got Tritonopia. It's the brightest, most contrasted colors. It also helps you in-game. So as you guys can see, we got the default. I have myself set at yellow. We have my allies or just teammates set at blue. We have the enemy color at line green. You guys can see you can choose through any of those colors there, whether it be teal or the light blue, pink, whatever you want. And then my party color, I just have a lighter blue so I can distinguish them between just like the random teammates on my team. But as you guys can see here, the other colors really do not stand out nearly as much as just normal colors. 
So that Tritinopia, if you were to use it in colorblind mode, that's definitely the one I recommend. And down here, I get into a lot of questions about my field of view as well. I like 110. I used to be at around 100. I did up it after playing Vanguard. I was running it at 120, I believe, and the game just felt slow. So after sliding it up to 110, everything felt great again. Um, this is a preference as well. I know a lot of people like to play on just normal 80. I know the pro players had to play on 100, and some people like 120. I don't think 120 is necessary because it's multiplayer. It's close quartered. It's not like Warzone where you need to see that far away. So personally, just pick what you're ever comfortable with here. Just go slide through the settings. Whatever you find the most success with is what you should be using. And then down here, motion blur off. Make sure you have that off. I understand it's a realism thing, but we're not. It's not war. We're not in a war. We're not in real life. It's a game. If you want to get some kills, make sure you have that turned off. You can miss an enemy if you're not. And then our ADS field view, you're going to want that at affected, which means it will go down to like 80 FOV when you aim down the sights. If it's at independent, it will stay at 120. So keep that in mind. Those are all my graphic settings here. We're going to slide over to the next thing. So I get a lot of questions in this audio tab. And first one is the audio presets. I have that set at high boost. This one's not all that important. The audio isn't actually all that bad in this game, especially when it comes down to hearing footsteps and whatnot. My preferred is going to be high boost because it does kind of amplify those footsteps. And you can get a greater idea of where they're actually coming from. But the big question I get is the hip, hip marker sound. Uh, everybody says, hey, how do you have that hit marker sound? Are you cheating? I didn't that's not the right to hit marker sound you're not even playing the game well yeah that's not true so right here you guys see hit marker sound effect enabled and you guys can select which sound default is these default black ops cold war one and then over here at classic totally changes it up i don't remember which game this is actually from or if it's like a combined between a couple games but i run classic here i've run it for a very long time and it was just a setting i just thought everybody would have seen at some point but there we are so I don't really have any more settings here to show you guys, but if you have any questions, make sure you guys go down in the comment section. I will definitely answer them to the best of my ability. We're going to slide over into a gameplay that's going to best feature these settings. You guys can see all of my settings live in action, why I choose all of them that I do. My biggest suggestion to you guys is going to be using that linear and legacy aim assist mode options there. It really does help. I seriously have not gotten nothing but positive feedback on it. But like I said, we're going to jump into this gameplay. Make sure you guys hit the like button. If you guys learned anything new, helped you at all. Make sure you also hit the subscribe button if you're new. You're not going to want to miss any of my daily videos. Hope you guys enjoy. Domination. Taking Alpha. Capture the objective. Enemy took Charlie. Securing B. Alpha locked down. Securing Charlie. Send decks out. Enemy took Bravo. Losing Alpha. That's my dog. Losing Charlie. Taking B. We lost Charlie. Spy plane. Spy plane in the turn. Skyline in the 
Shots good. We need half a minute. Mike running.
Target inbound. Your field mic has been destroyed. Begin hub operations. Losing me. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you could make sure you hit that like button for me, that'd be absolutely awesome. If you're new to the channel, make sure you also smash that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.